Hello, everybody. I hope a couple of you could make it tonight. I'm so sorry that I had to cancel last night. But it was funny. As the day was wearing on, I said, you know, my head hurts. And it was like having that strap around your head. And when I started having problems seeing out of this eye, and it felt like my vision was closing in. I said, this is a migraine. This is not just a headache. Hello, everybody. And I ate some lunch and felt so nauseous. And I went, mm, migraine. I just love it when you get a migraine. <laughs> so I do apologize. I wouldn't have canceled it if I really thought I could make it. But I knew I couldn't because <laughs> uh, it was so cute. Mark was trying to tell me a story. And before I realized I was having a migraine, he wanted to come tell me a story. Well, all yesterday, I was kind of like this, not knowing why. And I said, can you tell it really fast? Because I realized just him talking was painful. <laughs> so he dropped all the shades in the room, and I covered up and just took some Tylenol and just kind of rode it through. So I'm much better today. And today was a beautiful sunny day. So... It's a good thing. It is a good thing. Oh, I want you to see my necklace set because that's one of those that I made. I think I made it a wee bit too long or else I've got to bring the camera down so you can see it. <laughs> now, aren't I being just a little Jody? How are you feeling, Jody? That's right. You and your husband got your shots yesterday. How are you feeling? I, I, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh, it is so good to see all of you. I've been working really hard, too. So, I'll show you. Today, I finished, for the most part, I think I finished my thread painting. Just sore arm, all well, good. Okay, and that soreness, it'll be gone by tomorrow. So, and I have heard the second one sometimes can just make you really tired. So Mark and I are planning on having a ready-to-eat meal that day. And we'll just, if we want to just come home and slug it and watch movies on TV, that's good for us. But I've got to tell you, just having that vaccine is it I mean I don't know if you feel this way Jody but it's the best feeling because it feels like a little bit of insurance that hopefully I'm not gonna die anytime soon so anyway because you know what I'm sorry but it, I was scared to death with that virus out there and I've been wanting to get my vaccine for quite a while so I'm so proud of you. Everybody get those vaccines. Oh, I know. Didn't you feel like that? I, I Luckily, I had my doctors. But, Hi, Miss Betty. Wait till you see Betty's nighttime quilt. It is snazzy. I mean, really looking good. So, but yeah, we were so happy in the middle of the store. And we're like telling everybody, we're getting our shot today. We're getting our shot. And they probably thought, not much for elderly people to do. <laughs> if that's your idea of a great date. <laughs> but anyway, what can you do? I tell you what. But you know what? We've been waiting for so long. And I didn't begrudge the teachers or anybody. But like I told my doctor yesterday, with my other health problems, Goodness, yeah, oh, yes, wait till you see Betty's with the moon in it. So, yeah, it was, it's exciting. So, we've been wanting to tell everybody, and we saved our, got our card and a little sticker. And, but my doctor said, I'm so happy you're getting it. I, she said, I don't understand anybody not wanting to get theirs. She said that, um, the, the side effects of having COVID alone. She said, and being put on a ventilator is something you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. So now that we've had our first one, I'm still being very careful until two weeks after my second one. And even then, I'm going to be careful just in case if 
if we can't get it, could we be a carrier? So I'm going to take good care of other people by keeping my mask on. But if I can just think, oh, I won't be laying in a hospital gasping for breath. I have claustrophobia. And the, to me, the worst way of dying would be if I couldn't breathe. So not for Deb. So anyway, it's so good to see you. And I'll show you my quilt real quick and tell you what I've got planned next for it. Because then I want to show you your photos. And uh, I can't wait. Now, my, my quilt, I've been doing a whole lot of thread painting. So it's kind of drawn up a little funny. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. When you're working on the quilt and it wants to draw up, and trust me, sometimes it will just do that. Take a spray bottle and give a pretty good heavy misting of that quilt. Okay? So I think, yeah, you can see me misting it over here. And I'm going over it pretty darn good. I bet you you can guess why I'm getting you to do this. Now, it's probably soaked in pretty good. I'm going to take it and I'm going to stretch it back out. Because when you're thread painting, it does want to draw it back up. And that's another thing to remember. Remember that when you want, when you're going to make a landscape or art quilt that's going to be heavy on thread painting, make it bigger the, than your intended size because it will probably shrink two to three inches in every direction. So I was noticing that even with my gloves on, which boy, I hate gloves, but these make it so much easier. With my arthritis, it really helps to keep my hands from killing me because these have that, that sticky stick onto it. But now see, I turned it over to the pretty side. I try not to do too much ironing from the top, especially once I've quilted it because I don't want to lose all that pretty texture that you put in. But at this point, I need to make sure that it's going to lay a little flatter because I noticed when I was done with it a little while ago, I thought, well, that's an unusual shape. So luckily, I don't have it quilted yet. And that's another thing that I want to talk to you about. Not everything am I doing to the quilt right now. Let me, like I want to do some lines in the sky. I want to really make the mountains be more pronounced. I will be doing that. Um, I will be doing that when I quilt it. So I'll tell you some more about that. Oh yeah, my doctor was talking about how some people have terrible blood clots, young people with strokes. Um, one man for 14 months hasn't had a fever under 101. And, and he was in his 40s, I think. So there are some lasting effects from COVID. You don't want it. And get that vaccination. It was easier than a flu shot. And you know what? Vaccinations are part of our life. And thank God, I was, I've been listening to the news and they were talking about vaccinations have been around for hundreds of years. Depending on the culture, like in China, they were doing very early vaccinations. They called them, I think, and some of them were called inoculations, like with smallpox and things. So there's a very long history of vaccinations. And thank God we have them. I got to tell you this story. There's a sweet lady that the quilt store I used to hang out with sweet lady that was there that was always in an electric wheelchair and I kind of wondered you know what was going on and one day I kind of said I'm sorry did you have an accident or something and she said no she said I went into the hospital as a six-month-old baby and came and caught polio in the hospital 
And ever since then, I've been in a wheelchair. And I thought to myself, I would not take a chance. And now that we have polio vaccinations, I wouldn't take a chance on having someone get polio. So it's a good thing. And I don't know if you noticed, <laughs> the shot went great. Then I went to see my doctor and she sent me to the lab to have blood drawn. And then I have a, well, there it is. I got a little bruise there. I was a tough stick that day. So I'm going to make sure to drink more liquids next time. But the good news is that my A1C was 6.2, which is much better. It's in the very well controlled stage. And all my triglycerides were normal and all of uh, Everything. I mean, it was looking good. So I'm so tickled because you know what? This year has been a scary year and I want to be around for a lot longer. And I've got to tell you this. I've been telling y'all that doing this show has really given me a new lease on life and the test work shows. So I'm very excited. Now I just need to exercise every day. So Okay, here we go. So last week you saw that I had the mountains. I haven't done anything else to the clouds or mountains. Mostly I worked on this side. So I came in here and using, um, using zigzag stitch and straight stitching, I wanted to give texture to this mountain to make it look like it wasn't just a green blob, you know? So I wanted to maybe make it look like it had hedgerows or peaks and valleys. Then I came down and I did a bunch of stitching where the trees are to give them definition. Then the next range I did the, some stitching on. Then another like hedgerow type group of trees. And then what I've done is I did some stitching on the stone wall to kind of differentiate, but it's not, it's not showing up that good. So let me tell you what I did. I put what is supposed to look like a vine growing up on it, and I did some stitching with dark green thread to make it look mossy in areas. So I put some nice green moss on it, and when, when it comes time, there's a lot of grass I did, and I had the grass come up on the wall. And I wanted to show you, remember down at the bottom, I had, you know, very different fabrics. Well, I wanted to show you that so far, the threads painting is doing a much better job of blending it in, okay? So... Let's see. Then I did more stitching on the tree just to give it more depth. And then I did more stitching on the trunk and a little more stitching and adding colors. The best way to do thread painting is plan on using at least three colors, light, medium, and dark. And sometimes a real nice accent color to catch your eye. But I think pretty much now I have done all of my thread painting. You see, I've got lots of tall grasses and some wayward stitches like, what the heck is that? <laughs> so I will be going over. Some of it's just like tail ends of thread because you just get so busy. You're just plowing ahead. So anyway, I think I've done pretty good with blending because, you know, I had lots of, you look at all the different, different fabrics and pieces that I did. So I'm pretty happy. I did a, a little touch. I tried to put what looks like a light on in the cabin, but I think I'm going to have to go a pale orange because the yellow just kind of blended with the brown. So I'll have to do a little touch more on that. But I think, you see how this side, do you see how wonky this side is? But I will be trimming that up. So, but if, like, it might be coming in so far that I would have to cut too much of this tree off. So I may have to do some more stretching down here. 
but it's called blocking. And if you want to, you want to sound real artsy fartsy, you'll say blocking where I say stretching, but um, it's anytime you want to get a quilt to be straight and square, you take a water bottle and you just, you just wet it down. And then if, it's a quilt and it really needs blocking. It, it's not square at all. You can either go to a room where it's clean carpet or lay a clean towel down and pin it square. Pin it to something that will hold to that so you can stretch it and get it just perfect. Pin it all down, all around the outside edge. Let it dry. Then when you take it up, it should stay that way. And with this, I stretch it and then iron it. And, um, but you can see where it is a little wonky here. So I'm going to do a little bit more stretching. And mostly it's because I came out too far with my fabric. But that's okay. I always know I'm going to do it. I don't trim it up until I'm completely done and ready to quilt it. And the reason is because you just don't know if you're going to add something with thread painting that's going to make it, you know, pull up more. So you don't trim it to the end. You could add more um, fabric to the sides, but when I designed it, I knew that I wanted this tree to be on the outside edge because, like I said, I'm trying to keep it. I don't want everything lining up in the middle. So having that, oh, having the cabin and tree over to one side is a good thing. Having the mountains off center is a good thing. So, but um, yeah, you can, you can add more, you can add a border, you can do all kinds of things if you wish to. So now I've done the thread painting. And do you feel like you've seen enough of the thread painting? Oh, thank you, hon. Thank you, Miss Laura. Um, but if you if do you feel you've seen enough of the thread painting that you feel like you would know what to do on your quilt? Because if you don't, I'll show you some more. And mainly what I do is I do zigzag and straight stitches. And I can do straight stitches up and back. Or if it's real close to me, I do long up and backs. If it's further away, okay, let me show you this part. I'm going to bring this a little closer. Okay. So see how I did more long stitches in the front here? Then you'll notice as I got farther and farther away, they got shorter and shorter, okay, to show, help show the distance. And then when they got some of these, or like in the tree, I did a bunch of circles and squiggles. Now, you can't even see some of the darker little circles and squiggles. But, um, but when you get up close, you do long, long lines. And sometimes you can take, put your machine on a zigzag stitch and do go sideways with it. And the zigzag stitch can come in handy when you want to hurry up and get it done. I, I love watching somebody do thread painting and they do it so carefully and so nice and so slow. I'm like, that I'll fall asleep. So if I put it on a zigzag stitch and then do it, um, do it sideways, it'll give it a little feeling of more fullness than just straight lines back and forth. So it's a lot of fun. You see, I don't know if you can, if the camera is going to let you see today, but the, I did the lake in kind of straight like this, kind of little lazy straight lines. And um, the sky, I'm going to kind of do the same thing, but I'll do that with quilting. So, you've got to quilt it. That's, you know, it is an art quilt. And to enter any show, a quilt has to be three layers joined together. So, um, I'm going to do a lot of outlining with the quilt because I'll probably put a double layer of batting behind the mountains. 
And then I might put an extra layer behind some of the clouds to make them a little poofy because I like that stuff. Then, so then I'll do quilting. I'll do the kind of the long lines in the sky and outline the mountains and then outline each new area of grass or anywhere the color changes. And then I'll probably do some more lines on the lake, just one or two to give it dimension. And then what I'm going to do when all the layers are together, I'm going to do some outline stitching on the stone wall because that's going to give it real depth. But I don't know if you can see any of, yeah, I did some, whoops, let me get to the right place. I did some green zigzagging. Oh, I did some green zigzagging in the wall to kind of look like mossy. You know, and then I did some light um, sewing lines, thread painting, and some dark thread painting. And when I do, when I quilt it, I'm going to use a dark thread on it and, and quilt in the dark lines to give it a little rounded shape like it's really made of stone. When I quilt it, I will outline the tree and the cabin, give those some definition. So. You know, this will come alive when I quilt it. Hello, Robin. How are you, sweetie? So now I'm done blocking the color. I'm done creating the different focal points like the lake, the cabin, the tree. I am going to add a swing to the tree. I am done with the thread painting. So now comes embellishment. My Favorite, favorite part. So you're getting better. Oh, thank goodness, sweetheart. We were just talking about um, we've a couple of us have had our um, COVID vaccinations and we're very happy, very relieved. I mean, want to dance happy. So, okay. So I'm going to come over here and show you what my thoughts are. Okay, my thoughts for the quilt. All right, I found some yarn. And I'm thinking of doing some bobbin thread sewing. And but I want to show you this would be good stems. I can either couch them. You have to wait six months for your shots. Oh, sweetie. Well, if you're having any long-term effects, they're saying the shot could maybe minimize those. And I hope that's true for you. Now, some of this yarn I put right here along the edge of the wall. And in fact, to get some of the color out, I kind of took it apart because there's a beautiful blue here. But here, this can be used to do some leaves or stems. The green. Now, I, I was excited to use this, and I thought I could use some on the wall, but it's kind of big for the wall. So what I'm going to have to do is try to trim it down some and then see if there's somewhere I can use it. But it's that's kind of tricky because I'm looking for scale. Now, this yarn, I'm going to take some of this pink and use for flowers, or the pinky orange, the glittery part. And I might use some of this either on my mountains or the water or the clouds. I haven't decided. I use some of this yarn right here. Hi, Kathleen. So good to see you. Let me see if I can come in a little bit. I use some of this yarn right. Whoops. That's the only problem is then I got to move. Okay. I used it for the vine that's coming up the wall. And I'm not sure how well that works, but I'm trying. Now, this is going to be good to use 
in this field. And I haven't decided whether to just use it in little places for flowers or just to put it in and then have like stems and stuff in front of it. So I, whoops, let me come this way. So I'm, I haven't decided how exactly I can use it. I've got some pink that will make wonderful flowers. I've got floss that would be interesting. Then I've got this. And I'm thinking this would make a great stem. And this could be like a big leaf. Like if I wanted to do maybe a big a wild iris or something. So I'm looking at all this. I better bring this back out. So I'm looking at this, um, I think for right now, these are my best shots at the yarn I have, but I'm going to keep looking for more. But then I'm going to take, and whoop, I might have forgotten to bring them, but I've got a baggie of floss, which I will be using the DMC, more of this, but in all kinds of colors. And I'll be using that for flowers and things because I do want to make a lot of purple blue, I mean, blue, blue bonnets. I showed Sunday this awesome th uh, thread called Quilt Highlights by YLI and how you can take and tack it down. But if you pull one of the threads, it ruches right up. And this, I think, would make would be wonderful for my little bluebells. So, you see a tree? Oh, this looks like a tree base to you. I bet you that's what you were saying. That would be cool. So, I've got, I don't need the blue yarn for anything. I've still got all of these colors of thread. But I am going to use, I am going to use this, this stuff in places. But I'm probably, I'll show you how to couch some of this down. But I'm probably going to do a lot of this by hand. And um, and I do have some with some things with little sparkles that might be fun to try to use here and there. But um, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. So I'm this one, I'm kind of playing by ear. I even have, look at this cool yarn that I have. Whoops. Hold on. Isn't this cool? So I haven't decided if I need this somewhere. This, especially in the light part, could be great smoke to come out of the cabin. So there's all kinds of little things that I can do. Um, I, I can do some confetti down here to look like wildflowers. Maybe I would use cut some yellow and orange wildflowers out here. Oh, that might be pretty. And go ahead and do that as confetti. So, but anyway, I'm very excited to have all of this to work on. So right now, I'm going to take some of this green, just plain green yarn, and I'm going to show you, maybe I'll use a little bit of this, and let me show you how I'm going to turn it into some nice stems and leaves. Okay, this is a pretty good color. I don't want the color to be too bright or too shiny. All right, here we come. Let me tell you, I've been going through some thread. I went through so many bobbins because... You're I hate to be talking to the desk. <laughs> I went through so many bobbins upstairs, probably about five. Because, you know, zigzags, they use a lot of thread. <laughs> but anyway, I said, well, I've got the thread. Might as well use it. So I'm really lucky. I do have a pretty good stash. I only buy it on sale half price. So It was in the 80s here today. I got hot. <laughs> Just something doesn't seem right when you have the air conditioning on in March. So, okay, let me get my green thread loaded up. 
this is nice Aurifil. I got this second hand because normally I can't afford something like Aurifil. So that's right, nice. My Jenny Buyer likes it. You know me. I mean, I'm terrible. If Jenny Buyer likes it, then that's the thread for me. So, all right. I also have my cow, my collage cow from the class I took in February. I have it on the frame. So hopefully by Sunday, you will get to see it all done. Because I'm going to be my, oh, my daughter's birthday. I wonder if I could mail it to her in time. She turns 40 this year. So that would be a very special present for my daughter. All right, here we go. All right, I have the thread in the machine. Now, let's see. All right. So you see where I've got all the, you do all the thread painting first. And what I was trying to do, I used some variegated thread. In fact, let me see if I have the variegated thread down here. I was very happy with it. It was from Connecting Threads. I might not, I might have left it upstairs. Yeah, it was from Connecting Threads, but it did a really good job in adding a lot of texture and color. So now, what I'm going to do is on my machine, I, oops, first thing I need to do is get this, get this quarter inch foot off of here. The moment, let me tell you, the moment that I would try to do the zigzag I'm going to need to do, I would break a needle and maybe damage my machine. So please always check, always check your, um, check your foot before you sew. Also, I just wanted to show you what I do if I'm here. I've got a lot of stuff on my desk right now. I just take a pen and I pin this foot to my pen cushion. And that way it reminds me. I see it. It's right there. So that's one of my little tips. Instead of trying to get the accessory box and put it away, I just, the two I use the most, this one that I can use for zigzag and that one that is my quarter inch foot, I just pin them to pin them onto my pin cushion. All right, so one of these is going to be quite a big stem. And so I'm going to put it, start it all the way up here because I want some of the things that are real close. Let me see if I, hold on a second. I need a little more light here. So let me see if I can. Uh, well, I'm hoping it'll work. But I've got the machine is on. And I put this thread. Okay. Oops, come on. This machine has a hard time with the presser foot to stay up. Okay. And see how I... I put this yarn through. Now, somewhere I have a couching foot. And if I find it, I will use that. But for right now, I don't have it out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. Let me. Okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to hold the thread. I've got, I'm holding it in the back and I'm holding it in the front. And I make sure that I do a zigzag over, over this. And I might want it to come at a slight angle. Don't pull the yarn too tight unless you want it to be very thin because the, the more relaxed the yarn is, the wider it is. Now, one thing I might do, take I might take a page out of Miss Betty's book and I might try to find some leaves and cut them out and use them. See, I don't go all the way to the bottom and I don't go all the way to the top. I vary 
these stems and I might just cut the end of this later. Okay, but now I have this very, whoops, let me show it. This very nice stem. And I'm gonna come in and put another one. And you know, even though you can tell it's yarn, you can tell it's yarn here, you can't once it is, once it's in place. Now, these might be irises, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna sew them in a clump instead of marching them like little soldiers across the thing. So here we go, okay. And just hold it down in the back and hold it down in the front. And just zigzag it right on. Now you can use, you can use invisible thread and zigzag it in place. But this is just very easy. It matches. And you could also do a straight stitch down it if you didn't want to see the zigzag. But now I'm going to do a shorter one on this side. The good thing, the best thing for you to do when you're doing a specific plant like this, the best thing you can do is to remember that these things tend to grow or look better in threes or fives. So over here, and this one is going to be shorter, okay? So I'm making, I'll make each of them a different height because things aren't very uniform in nature. And so this one is, it'll make my third stem. And this one's going to be a wee bit shorter. You just zigzag right over it. And that is pretty easy. And I'll cut the ends just right a little bit later. All right, so let me see if I can show you the light. I don't, hold on, light might not be showing you, but here you've got one, two, three, okay? And then if I want to, if I want to turn this into something, This could be, I have to decide, I have to look and decide, but let's say I'll put this over here. All right. Now this one, it's not the same color. So what I'm going to do is put it on a straight stitch so that you don't really see and put it on a small stitch so you don't really see that it's the wrong color. It'll just look like a highlight. Okay, let's see how this one looks. All right. And remember, vary your lengths. So here is this one. And these can be different. You know, and I'm going to decide what I'm going to put on them and how they should look. But it's very, as you see, it's very easy. And this one I just did a straight stitch on. I don't know. I, I have to, I'm going to have to look at some inspiration to know exactly. But I, next week, I will show you exactly what I'm doing with these. So what I might do is wrap up a bunch of this, cut it off here, then come right here and do another zigzag. Oh, let me change my thread color. The green would definitely show up. But most of this, remember, I'm going to do by hand. Um, okay. Most of this I'm going to do by hand. And, but I need to, let me switch this thread. But I want to make sure I'm looking at actual photographs. I want to, this one I want to get very accurate. 
And so this is, and you can do yours in a fantasy. And you can do the flowers small enough. Like I'm doing, these are my big showy ones. The rest are going to be tiny little things. So I'm just going to use DMC floss and make some flowers. You know, I don't, they won't be very descript. But I did want a few of these that are going to um, really show you that you, you're standing right there in this field. They're, they're going to do a little trick of the eye to show depth. So most of them are going to be small, but I am going to have a few big ones for depth. Now I'm trying to get my, let me see if my threader will work. Sometimes the threader acts up on me if I don't get it in the right position or hold my mouth just right. Aha, it worked. That was wonderful. All right, let me get the camera over so you can see better. All right, so I'm going to take this, and I'm not sure exactly. This is where it would help if I knew exactly what it was. <laughs> That's why I'm going to go and kind of look up some. But I'm, I'm going to pretend it's goldenrod or something, I think. So I'm going to put this on top here. Yeah, she had to use a pediatric needle on my hand. And, you know, I take baby aspirin, so... I bruise easily. And I told her it didn't hurt because I didn't want her getting all nervous. But I tell you what, I wasn't happy. <laughs> all right. I'm not sure what to do with this. So I'm going to bring it down for here for now and act like that there's two bunches of flowers. So let me come stitch across. So I just kind of bunched it up. And stitch across. Now, this is a good place to use a bamboo skewer as an awl because you don't want to stitch your fingers. And I like using a bamboo skewer because if the needle hits it, the chances of it breaking my needle or damaging my machine are very slim. But if you use a, a piece of metal as a stiletto and you hit it, Good luck. So I like using a little bamboo skewer. I think it's just safer. All right. So now I've got the color in place. I just have to decide what kind of flower I want it to be. So I know what to do, you know, how short to make it, where to stitch it. But I think I'm going to do it in a little couple little clumps. So I think, let me, I'm going to put it on a zigzag stitch, a shortened zigzag. Let's see what I can come up with. It'll, this is why it's important to have the right matching thread in place. Whoops. Well, I think I did break my needle. So I hit something. I'm not sure what I hit. I think when you get all of the different layers, because I did bunch this up. And then this one up here. I'll do something, you know, trying to make it look. I'm going to look at my photos that I've got from my research and see what kind of yellow flower I want to make it. So I had thought about just taking and stitching this down, but uh, I think it might look a little, I don't know. I don't know if I could turn that into something that looks natural. I don't think I could. So anyway, I will pull this out. Let me trim this off and trim this off. Okay. All right, I'll hold it up so you can see now what I've got. Turn this off. Whoops. All right. Here we go. All right. Let me pull, put this back over here. 
I need to clean my desk off. I think it's just a wee bit too fussy. I'm going to put my skewer back for now, but I keep it right here by, you know, you can get a pack of bamboo skewers for next to nothing. I use them. I use them for my paper bead making. All right. Let's see. Um, whoops. It would help if I cut the bobbin thread. <sighs> All right. So it's not going to look like a lot yet, but let me see. Here are the three stems. And it's just green yarn. And then here is the yellow flower. And I'll find a way to make it look just like I want on its stem. So, but like I said, I think I'm going to do most of it. I'm going to get my cruel needle. And then I'm just going to go to town and cover this thing full of flowers. And the vine that's on the wall, I got to figure out what I want to have on the vine. And uh, and I haven't decided yet if I'm going to put an animal out there. Oh, I know one thing I wanted to show you. I'm not finished with it yet because I need to use some brown threads. But do you see this? Do you see this right here? Whoops, come back this way. Do you see this? I decided to put signs of a path through the opening in the stone wall to come to this area of green grass here, which I think I want it to look like a way to get to the lake. So that's one thing I added today. And you ha I'm having a hard time showing it to you good, but I tried to do it wider in the front, then do a little bit windy and getting narrower and narrower in the back. So I will work on that a little more, getting like a, a dusty tannish brown, you know. I'll put some more of that on there. But, and knowing me as you do, I'm going to be anxious to start a new project. And so, I'm going to be thinking, and I would love it if you wanted to share your ideas with me too. So, Let's go look at your photos. You've looked at my stuff enough. Let's look at your stuff. All right. Let me grab this. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, honey, thank you. Thank you. I, I always tell people that they go through, they go through an awkward stage and stick with them. Because when I do get all of the flowers on this, it's going to be real pretty. So stick with them through the awkward stage, and they'll come back. All right. Here we go. Whoops. I'm going to lay this out so we can enjoy it. But it's coming together. It's all coming together, and it's finding its, it's, finding its place. And that's what I love. This is just little pieces of fabric, thread and time. And guess what? I've got that. <laughs> All right. Let me get our photos up. And we are going to look at the, we're going to look at the art quilt. We'll look at all quilts um, Sunday. But this is art quilt day today. All right. Let's go to Miss B. We will get to see, oh, don't do that. We'll look at Miss B's folder and her pup dog. Oh, don't give me a hard time. It's acting like it doesn't know how to open this project. Um, let me make it bigger. Well, not that big. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, that's cool. Look at this. I love it. And I love the way the thread painting really delineates the fur. Wonderful job, Miss B. I have no idea why I had to open that in a, such a silly way. Miss Betty. Now, 
Miss Betty has done her landscape here. And I'm hoping she might be brave enough to try some thread painting because it's really nice coming along very nicely. But this is what I want to show you. I want to show you what this woman has done. I love this quilt. I never would have thought of doing a nighttime scene. So how awesome is this? Now do you want to see what she has done? Watch this. Look at this. I'm going to enlarge it so you can see. She has gone in and done the shading, the blending. I mean, it's amazing. Okay. So I'm, uh, it might be a little bit big. Let me see if I can bring it down just a touch. But I want you to see the work she has put into this. Look at how the moon positively glows off of that old dead tree. Look at how now the owls have just popped to life. Look at that. Look at how expertly she put the reflected moonshine, the moonlight. I didn't mean, mean to make it sound like booze, but <laughs> look how... Look how amazingly, artistically, she put that reflected moon on that tree. So I just wanted to say, fantastic job. Fantastic. I love what she's done. And like I said, I never would have thought of doing a nighttime scene. How cool is that? I mean, I'm just blown away. So, Miss Betty, it is phenomenal, hon. Phenomenal. Way to go. All right. Let me tilt this up just a wee bit. All right. Let's see who we're going to go look at. But Miss, Miss Betty is our star of the day. I don't think Miss Bonnie has anything art quilt. I don't know if I have anything art quilt. No, I don't see anything. Okay. Let me see. Miss Dolores. Oh, my gosh. You can't get much better than this raccoon. Don't ever open this too big because I it would look like a photograph to me. I opened it real big and was like, oh, my God. <laughs> that is amazing. I love her work. All right. Let's see what else. And here is her lovely scene. And I'm hoping that she's going to try some thread painting. But I love her fabrics and, and how they mimic great mountains. I love her waterfall and lake. Wonderful. And she went in and did some cutting of the fabric also to give it a look of depth. Wonderful work. All right, let me see that. Okay, that's it for Miss Dolores. Diana, I don't think Diana, did Diana do anything? I don't think she had one. But boys, she, I've got great photos to show you of hers on Sunday. And Miss Jody, I still, I don't think it gets any better than this. I just, Love that. Love it. Way to go, Miss Jody. Let's see what else. And if anybody has put extra uh, pictures on the site, I apologize. I did not see them. I apologize. And here's Miss work. And this is art quilting. And these are, I don't know if they're like cards or what, but they're done with fabric and paper that she dyed herself. So beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, let's see what else she has. Here is her polymer clay art that she had done. So realistic. I love it. Here's an 
uh, polymer clay piece of jewelry. Here are bird stamps that she has done, and they're just lovely. And she loves cutting out little birds, and so she mimics those canceled stamps, and they're great. And these are some little sewing things. I don't know if they're going to be refrigerator magnets or what, but they're absolutely precious. So I just love how Miss Linda keeps herself busy. Oh, I forgot to show you this. I love this landscape. I think it is gorgeous. Very distinctive. Very beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and I love, she has a way of making it look like reflections using the fabric. I don't think Miss Marsh is here, but I'd like to show her green crocheted pouch. I think that is so cute. Way to go, Miss Marsha. All right, then let's see. Um, um, who else would have? Patricia Fry. Patricia Fry didn't have an art quilt, but she has a cute, cute quilt uh, picture of her son at a, what do you call it, an aquarium, Ripley's Aquarium in Myrtle Beach, and I'll be showing you that Sunday. And here is Miss Polly's hand-painted and thread-painted beautiful piece of fabric and she only showed it to us to ask us how to get rid of the dots but I can't wait to see what she's done with that all right let's see if there's anything else I think Susie Blake I know that she had done she had started work on her landscape so I can't wait to see what else she can do all right, let's see. I think that is it for today. So, okay. So thank you for sending in photos. Please send me your photos. We love seeing them. They inspire us. Like I said with Miss Betty, she cut her fabric up for her fields, for her, her greens. She cut them up. So made the, the land look like it undulated and I thought what a great idea so we learned so much from all of you so let me see um want to make sure you're still there everybody still there so I think I just wanted to say these gloves are wonderful and I wanted to tell you I just love Quilting Arts Magazine. Since this is Art Quilt Thursday on Friday, um, if you have one magazine to choose and you love art quilting, Quilting Arts Magazine is it. Every time I get mine, it's like a treasure. So anyway, do I have batting under my iron and surface? Yes, it's a piece of plywood and then cotton batting. Don't use polyester. It doesn't like to be ironed at high heats. And I almost made that mistake. But um, here is my ironing board. Mark made it for me. And it's 24 by 65. And it's a nice sturdy, like three-quarter inch plywood so it won't warp. Then it's got cotton batting on it. And then I buy the this reflective Teflon. But you can use a canvas just or a broadcloth, anything 100% cotton to keep it from melting. And, uh, and I love it. Love, love, love it. But only one layer of batting. If, if you're, you don't ever want a mushy ironing board, because mushy ironing boards do not press flatly and smoothly, and can distort your fabric. I don't know why this camera is getting on my last nerve tonight. <laughs> but anyway, but I love, and it, this ironing um, board is sitting on top of dresser I got off Craigslist. So it doesn't take much to turn a simple dresser into a wonderful ironing space. 
any questions you might have. Oh, and another thing I do too. This is one of the best tips I can ever give you. Hold on. I know I have here. It is. Okay. I buy this sticky measuring tape. See this measuring tape? And it's got a sticky back on it. And I put this tape on every edge. I even, let me show you. You see that I have it on my ironing surface, right in the front there. You see that? Then I have it down here on my sewing table. I even put it along my sewing machine, my cutting, whoops, hold on. Don't go down. Okay. I put it along this cutting table. I have it on the edge of that cutting table. You can see a yellow strip. I put it everywhere. I have it on the little tables where um, if I have friends over to sew, I even have it on the edge of their tables. And I have to refresh it every once in a while because it gets worn. It gets rubbed on and accidentally ripped. But this stuff is wonderful. Put it everywhere. Because let's say you finish your quilt. You need to have a backing. Instead of having to do this big old thing of going and cleaning off your cutting table, I just hold the quilt up to this tape measure along the edge of my desk. So, okay, anything else? Uh, everybody here is so talented. I'm really, really, really tickled. And uh, any other questions? I love reading. I love reading what you write. So please know that I, I do read it all. So can you use, oh, absolutely use steam. And I'm a big fan now of the wool ironing mats. Let me grab my, my daughter gave this one to me for my birthday last year. And I'm a huge fan of these. I, I don't do a lot of piecing anymore. But these things are wonderful, and it makes whatever you press lay so flat. So I'm a real big believer in these wool mats. Very big. All righty. Sometimes if I'm doing piecing, I'll put that up here and then press all my blocks on top of that. So, <laughs> you know what? She found it um, on Amazon, that mat, for like 20 bucks. 20 couple bucks. So, you know, that's the price has come down on them from the early days. Well, I think I'm more tired than I thought. <laughs> I worked a lot today on that and yesterday. And, um, but next week I plan to have all of my flowers done on it. And then all I'll have left to do is next week I'll show you how I've done the flowers and what I've done to embellish it. And then the only thing we have left to do next week, I'll use my ink tips, any kind of, and permanent pens, like this little um, Sharpie. Look how it has a tiny little accurate point. But what we'll do is I'll show you how to give it definition because in some cases, some of this starts to run together. You don't want to make it look like a cartoon. But sometimes a well-placed permanent pin will make everything pop. Okay? So, we'll use ink tents and a Sharpie or I forgot the name of the other one. There is a different kind, too, that's really good. Any kind of good permanent pen. And, um, and then we'll, those will be the final touches. Then after that, it's, I, I personally like to finish off my art quilts as if it was a painting. So I will do, I will pick a natural linen color most likely to do what looks like a mat. And then I'll use whatever color frame 
I want to put on. This one, I might use a dark brown frame since that's what color my tree and my cabin are. And But I like it to look like it's a framed art print. All right, guys, you are the best. And I might add some beading into my flowers. We'll see. But I want to embellish. And also, I might have to have an animal or two out in this. So it'll be fun to see. Ooh, owls. Could be birds. Could be four-legged. We'll see. I'll have to surprise you with that next week. Thank you so much. Yes, it's been a healing week. I'm so proud of people getting their shots because I want you around for a long time. You know, I, I, I've worked hard this year to keep going. <laughs> so y'all take good care of yourself. Have a great weekend. I will be back Sunday afternoon at 3.05 Eastern time. And that I do a two hour um, for some of you who might not know. And we'll have to, hopefully I'll have my, my um, collage bovine done. So we'll see what else. Oh, and finally, I'm going to show you the rest of my UFOs. Because I keep meaning to do it. They're sitting here. Tons of them. So, and we'll probably have a drawing, you know, and I can mail those out in April. All right, everybody. Y'all are the best. So good to see all of you. Thank you. I'm so sorry I let you down last night. But I wasn't in good shape. <laughs> I don't get migraines often. But when I do, it gets my attention. Take good care. Vicki Robles, it was so good to see you. It was so good to see Robin. We had some great people. It's always a pleasure to see Jody and Kathleen and Laura. I don't think I saw Miss Linda tonight. She probably couldn't make it because of the nighttime change. But um, And I hope, oh, Betty was here to see her beautiful quilt. I called Mark over to see that today. I said, Mark, can you stop your work for a moment? Because I've got something to show you. And he was very impressed. So you're all wonderful. And thank you so much for spending this time with me. I'll see most of you on Sunday. And I'll definitely be back next Thursday night. Take good care. Happy spring. I hope the warm temperatures are getting. If anybody's in Alabama, we're dear hearts. We're thinking of you. So take good care of yourselves, okay? Get some sunshine this weekend. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye, guys. You're the best. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Thank you. Y'all are dear hearts. <laughs>